Hey everybody, for this episode, uh, I'm here today with a gentleman by the name of Mark Marlow, who is the director of Castle Rock Water. Now, Mark, um, believe it or not, I don't think that everybody knows you uh, here in Castle Rock or uh, the other uh, viewers of these episodes. So could you take a minute, tell us about yourself and tell us where the heck we are. Absolutely, so uh, again, I said Mark Marlowe. I am uh, originally, well, I came out to Colorado from Georgia. So my last job was in Dalton, Georgia, where I was doing something very similar to what I'm doing here. So I am a redneck from Georgia that's moved to Colorado and of course love it. I came here primarily because water is such a big in, uh, issue in the state of Colorado. And water is my passion, something that I love. I love what I do. Uh, I am a professional engineer, both in Colorado and uh, Georgia, um, and have, uh, well, let's see, probably almost 30 years of experience in the industry by yeah. this point in time. And uh, I live here in Castle Rock with my family, my wife, Laura, and I have two kids, both of which are about out of the house, George, so. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, I, I have two kids that just got out of the house. And uh, it is something to look forward to, I assure you. <laughs> it is, there's some great things about it. So you asked where we are in Castle Rock right now, I think, yeah. how we're doing in water. So bottom line is we're really doing well. Uh, we put in place a long-term renewable water plan back in 2005, which you, I'm sure, are aware of. Uh, and we've been following that plan ever since, and we've made a huge amount of progress. We're actually getting ready to update uh, the long-term strategic master plan this year. And in fact, that'll be going to our council probably in April. Okay. And we have a host of projects uh, that are ongoing as a part of that long-term plan. And, and several of those projects, of course, are related to importing water from outside of Castle Rock. And those are big, expensive projects that we've been engaged in for a long time and have already invested hundreds of millions of dollars in, as you know. We can certainly talk more about those projects. But you're sitting in a water plant right now that is another big part of our long-term plan, and that's related to reusable water. Castle Rock has a lot of our water supply, which is reusable by right from a legal standpoint and we want to make sure we reuse every drop of that. And then another big part of that plan is conservation. And we'll probably talk more about that, I'm sure, but conservation is, in my mind, another water supply for Castle Rock. Yeah. Uh, and storage. Storage is another thing that's been talked about across the state and something that Castle Rock is expanding our storage supplies. We have supplies in Chatfield, Ruder Hess, and we got two res well, we got one reservoir in Sedalia, and we're building another. So one of the things that um, people are talking to me about uh, a lot right now uh -huh. is is the conservation efforts we have going on here in Douglas County. Right. Obviously, as the biggest municipality here in Douglas County, can you take us into more detail? What are those conservation efforts that we do have going in Castle Rock right now? Absolutely, Castle Rock's been one of the leaders in conservation, quite frankly, across the state. I think you'll find that if you ask people and talk to people. We have a huge program for conservation here in Castle Rock, and probably one of the biggest things that we do is we put in place what's called a water budget rate structure. And I know as a resident of Castle Rock, you're very familiar with that water budget rate structure. That rate structure encourages folks to use water efficiently, and it's been very successful for us in helping to keep people using just the water they really need, both indoor and outdoor water. Uh, beyond that, of course, we have a huge educational program. We have thousands of residents that have gone through our Water Wiser class, which teaches people about how to irrigate responsibly, how often to irrigate, how to do it in Colorado. It also teaches them how to be more efficient, how to work on their irrigation system, what plants to plant here in Colorado, um, and, you know, the time, uh, as you know, we have some of the most um, restrictive schedules for water, outdoor watering of anywhere in the state. Um, currently, as you know, we, we only allow people to water before 8 a.m. or after 8 p.m. and every third day. And what that does is helps make sure that we're being efficient with that water supply. Another really exciting thing on conservation that is something that's a little new that you may not have heard about 
uh, since you were on uh, council is um, we've increased the Colorado scape rebate just okay. recently. We just did that at council at the last council meeting. So now, now hang on a second. Yeah. I've heard of Xeriscape. What's Colorado scape? Great question. So Colorado scape is really something that we started using here in Castle Rock to represent basically colorful, native, beautiful plants and landscapes that don't use a lot of water. And so we've basically been using that term here in, in Castle Rock for three or four years now. When we res refer, it's basically a xeriscape, except we don't think of xeriscape because there's actually lots of plants and beauty on a Colorado scape. Okay, so you talked about colorful. Is, uh, is it that uh, thing that you used to call uh, uh, KBG, the dangers of KBG? Yeah. Not KGB, but... Kentucky, Kentucky blue bluegrass, grass. yes, yes. We are trying to get rid of Kentucky bluegrass. Kentucky bluegrass, quite frankly, shouldn't be used um, in our residential landscapes here in Colorado. It, as you know, has to be on life support all the time. You have to water it a ton. And of course, there's a lot of other, other work you have to do to keep it alive and, you know, with the aeration and the dethatching and all those other kinds of things. But it, 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 we actually, George, we use still almost, well, anywhere from 42 to 46 percent of our water in Castle Rock still used for outdoor irrigation. Oh, wow. OK. And we're really trying to reduce that number. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do here in the next 10 to 20 years is reduce the per capita usage in Castle Rock by another 18 percent, which will put us around 100 gallons per person per capita per day. Now, okay, but you know, we still have uh, mediums. We have uh, areas close to the right of way that are still being watered. How, how, what is the plan to get to that lower rate when we still have medians even here in Castle Rock that are still watered? That's a, that's a great question. We have uh, extended the um, rebates for Colorado Scape, not just to residential customers, but also to non-residential customers. So HOAs are taking advantage of that now, homeowners associations, and any non-residential customer. So we're seeing an expansion of those replacements because a lot of those, as you know, are maintained by HOAs. Okay. Uh, of course, we also work with the town for areas where we're maintaining those medians and landscapes to remove that. And there's a couple of examples where we've already done that in the meadows and the woodlands. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a, big, a big issue and one of the areas we really need to hit. We're actually working on something right now related to this to go a step further for the future. And that's actually to eliminate um, grass or turf for front yards for new development in Castle Rock. Oh, wow. Uh, we actually met with a bunch of folks on the Economic Development Council Water Subcommittee this morning talking about that very thing. Okay. Speaking of, well, speaking of turf then for front yards, we love our parks in Castle Rock. Right. We love having our playing fields. Um, heck, my kids, you kid, your kids play soccer. Yeah. My kids grew up playing softball, baseball, football. Right. What about those? I mean, obviously, those, those are big areas of grass that we got to water, too. Or is there anything that the town is doing to actually eliminate those areas, cut back? Where is water conservation going when it comes to recreation? That's a, that, yeah, that's an important issue. And the bottom line is we did a, a project a couple of years ago now uh, where we replaced all of the baseball fields over in Metzler Park with synthetic turf, artificial turf. And... The, it was a great partnership with our parks department yeah. because we actually did it as a, a sort of a Colorado scape rebate program where we gave them some credits through that program and they replaced that and it actually really benefited them because what it did is it allowed them to use that turf year round instead of you know certain times of the year when you've got snow and mud and, and rain and you can't really put those, those ball fields to use. So they've been able to increase the usage on those ball fields. And uh, of course, they're saving a huge amount of water. I anticipate us doing more of that in the future um, okay. with respect to especially the athletic fields. Now, 
we're not proposing to give up turf completely. We've got a lot of beautiful parks here in Castle Rock, as you mentioned, and there are times when we want to have grass, um, but we want it to be areas that people are actually using and enjoying, not front yards that are not being used, quite frankly, for people to throw the football and hang out and play. As you know, most of the yards in Castle Rock are not being used that way on a daily basis. Quite true, quite true. Wonder if we could change the subject, and uh, you mentioned reuse, yeah. and we're in a reuse facility. So what is Castle Rock doing to reuse the water that we already have? So that's a really exciting piece of what we're up to. Um, we're really one of the leaders in the state with respect to reuse. Uh, there's only a few places in the state that have a advanced water treatment plant like this. So the bottom line is most of our water rights allow us to reuse that water to extension. And that's the reason we built this facility is to be able to put all that water to reuse. Now the way it works for us is the water is used here in Castle Rock. And as you know, it goes to a water reclamation facility just north of town. The water gets treated there to environmental standards, and it gets put back into East Plum Creek. The water then flows down about five, six miles into Sedalia, and we have a facility there where we take that water back out of the creek, along with some of the native water in the creek, and we put it in a reservoir, and then we pump it back to this facility. Okay. Now this facility is state of the arts. It's one of the most advanced treatment plants you can find in the country. One of the reasons is this plant was actually designed to reuse the water directly from the water reclamation facility. Oh, wow. So we currently put that water into the creek and we float it down to Sedalia, and then we bring it back and we treat it through this facility. And this facility has a whole bunch of advanced treatment processes to remove things that are not even regulated by state and federal um, requirements. So you end up with a really clean water here. You know, most places in this country are doing what we call de facto reuse, where part of their water supply is influenced by water reclamation facilities that have treated that water and put it back into the river. But they don't necessarily specifically have the advanced treatment processes in place to address that. So this facility does. Eventually, and we're working with the state of Colorado on this, we will set this facility and our system up to be able to take the water directly from the water reclamation facility back here for treatment and reuse. So yeah, you're probably wondering why is that important? Why would we do that? Because it's more efficient, it's more cost effective, and it also ensures that we don't lose water when we put it back into the creek. Some of that water can evaporate or soak into the sands, especially in a drought. Right. Uh, earlier this week yeah. in the Highlands Ranch Herald, there right. was an op-ed piece done by a resident up there, talked about uh, gray water, gray water usage, encouraging us to do anything with gray water. Um, is Castle Rock working on anything along those lines or are there just too many challenges? Oh no, I'm, I, that's, a, that's another great question. Uh, we are doing stuff with gray water and you know a little bit about this. That might have been a softball question, uh, yeah. I admit it. <laughs> you were on council when we, when we passed the gray water ordinance. Yeah. And so now just to be clear for folks that are listening, gray water is a little different than reuse water. Gray water generally is when you're reusing water inside the home or you're reusing water without a f that water going through a formal water reclamation facility. And we actually, you'll be excited to hear this since you were uh, around when we passed the ordinance, we actually finally have a project that's ongoing right now where they're putting in gray water systems in homes oh, right wow. here in Castle Rock. So over in the meadows, Lennar, one of our home builders, is putting in a system called a grader system. And the way that system works, it takes the water that you use, um, say, in the shower and in the uh, bathroom for your sinks and in the uh, um, kitchen and other locations, and it recycles that water inside the house for toilet flushing. Oh, wow so that you actually get two uses out of that water before it comes to us for treatment at the water reclamation facility. So we're not talking about a system in a home that's treating, you know, 
raw sewage uh, from the toilets. No, it's no. you know washing your hands, right. washing dishes, uh, and then that gets processed in the home. Yes. Uh, um, well, for folks that might be interested in something like that, have we seen what those cost? Do we do we have a good understanding of that? Or, or quite frankly, Mark, is that really a concern that you have at all? That's really the home builder's concern. No, it's definitely a concern. We actually offer rebates and incentives for home builders to do this as a part okay. of our water efficiency plan program. Though, just to be clear, the way it does work in the house is that water that you've washed your hands with or showered with it actually does get treated in a mini unit inside the house. So it actually gets filtered and it gets disinfected even before it goes to the toilet for toilet flushing. So okay. if your dog gets into it, it will probably right. still be okay, right? Yeah. Fido is not gonna have a big problem. Um, but we are concerned, the costs, um, the costs are significant. So in Castle Rock, we're only doing this on new builds right okay. now. We're not extending that to existing houses. Partly because it's pretty challenging to re retrofit a house to do that system after the fact. You bet. You bet. One of the, just to continue the conversation about gray water, one of the things we did see in that article was using gray water for uh, irrigation of the lawn and everything. I mean, I didn't hear you talk about that when you were talking about what's being done here in Castle Rock. Right. Would they, even something like that be appropriate? Would something like that be something that Castle Rock could explore? Uh, absolutely. Our, our ordinance allows us to do that. Um, the way our ordinance is structured is a home builder or a developer has to come to us with, hey, I want to look at using this particular type of system. And then we review that through our engineering program and make sure we're comfortable with it and then we'll work with them to roll that out. So if someone comes to us to do that, we'd be more than interested in exploring that. Okay. And as you know, we reuse, we already do reuse water at the golf course as well, and that's non-potable reuse. So a couple of years ago, Castle Rock built a pipeline from the water reclamation facility to Red Hawk Golf Course. And now all of the irrigation water at Red Hawk Golf Course is basically treated water from the water reclamation facility. Outstanding, because I know it's always been a concern with so much of the uh, historic use of water here in Castle Rock being aquifer based. Right. And that was something that I can remember coming up when Red Hawk Golf Course was first built right. of, you know, um, do we want to right. have a golf course that right. we're watering with our aquifer resources? Right. So it sounds like we've cracked the code and uh, um, found a solution that gets around that. We have, yeah. So we're no longer using Denver Basin Aquifer groundwater for water in the golf course. Instead, we're using that water rec reclaimed from the wastewater treatment plant. And you know, the good news is it does, that water does have a little bit of nutrient in it as well that's good for the golf course in terms of growing grass, right? Okay. I want to touch on um, the issue that I, I, I kind of alluded to it a minute ago. But historically, the water usage here in Castle Rock has been based on those groundwater supplies. Right. And we had a lot of conversations and made a lot of decisions while I was on the Castle Rock Council. But what can you tell us, what is our status of getting off of groundwater here in Castle Rock, moving to um, other surface resources, reuse resources, excuse me, not re reuse, but renewable right. resources. Right. So the great news is last year we were almost 33% renewable in terms of our water supply. And as you may remember, our goal is to be 75% renewable by 2050. We're making a lot of progress. We're actually ahead of schedule, I believe, in terms of meeting that goal. Over the next couple of years, we're gonna see an even bigger improvement in terms of our renewable water usage. We're doing a lot of things, as you know. We, were, uh, we joined a project called the WISE Project. And for the folks listening, that's uh, the Water Infrastructure Supply Efficiency Project. And it's a partnership between Denver Water and Aurora Water, and then 10 other South Metro water providers, including Castle Rock. And the way it works is we, ba we basically get renewable supplies from Denver and Aurora. Some of those supplies are directly mountain water sources that they have, excess supplies they have. And some of those are actually reusable water supplies that come from a renewable water source that Aurora has. And both of those supplies started coming to Castle Rock in April of 2018. Yeah. 
Ultimately, Castle Rock's got the biggest portion or share of that project. We're about 20% of that project. Oh, wow. Um, now, that's 2,000 acre feet a year that we can bring to Castle Rock from that project. Now, we have, as, you, as you probably remember, we have a couple of other big projects that are adding to that renewable water supply. Yeah. Um, one of them being Chatfield Reservoir Reallocation, which is a partnership between a number of water providers to put drinking water supplies into that reservoir. And we have some renewable water rights on the South Platte that flow into that reservoir that we will eventually bring back to Castle Rock for use. As you may remember, we also have been buying water rights up in uh, Middle South Platte area, uh, including in the Box Elder Creek region and the Lost Creek region. And today we've pulled uh, together about 2,300 acre feet of supply in that area. We own a well field up there that will allow us to divert that water supply and we already own capacity in a pipeline that goes all the way up to that region. So here in the next five to seven years, we'll begin building the infrastructure to treat that water and deliver that water all the way back to Castle Rock. Oh, wow. When, when that comes back, um, I, I, I know we've talked about um, uh, our partnership with Parker Water in Ruder Hess. Will that be the route it comes through and coming through Ruder Hess, or is it going to come through uh, Chatfield, let's say? Because you said it's on the South Platte. Yeah, so it will actually, it's, this is really cool. It will actually come through the regional infrastructure that we put together for the WISE project. Okay. So basically that pipeline that goes all the way north up into Weld County connect, will connect to the WISE infrastructure, which includes the pipeline that comes around E-470, comes down past Ruder Hess Reservoir, around the east side of Ruder Hess Reservoir, and then all the way into Castle Rock at our, our, our Ray Waterman treatment plant. Okay. One of the things that um, I have had people talk to me about uh, when I talk to them about water and the things that I learned when I was on the Castle Rock Council, they say, well, that's great for Castle Rock. But if you're not in the town of Castle Rock in order to get any of these kind of benefits, advantages, then does that mean we have to annex into Castle Rock? Uh, can you tell us about that? I mean, um, for folks that are outside of Castle Rock proper, uh, you know, are there still programs that push where Castle Rock water serves outside of town limits? Absolutely. So uh, we already serve, uh, we have a couple of extraterritorial services uh, agreements in place now. Um, one of them is uh, the Canyon South area, or also known as Macanta, which is off mm -hmm. of Crowfoot Road. And we put that in place. That actually was an agreement that was put in place back in 2005 to serve that area, believe it or not. Um, we finally have started service here recently because they finally started developing that area. The other one that we've done just recently is Bell Mountain Ranch, which is south of town, as you know, in unincorporated Douglas County. And they had their own water system down there, but they had a lot of problems. And of course, they didn't have access to renewable water. So we worked closely with Bell Mountain Ranch and we've been working with them for a long time, as you remember when you were on council. And this year, actually, we, or actually last year, we were able to finally sign an agreement with them to have them become part of our water system as an extraterritorial service customer. So they will not annex into the town um, but they will pay a, a, a surcharge, a 10% surcharge on the water supply that they get from us. And it's, a, it's actually worked out as a really nice partnership with Bell Mountain Ranch because they were able to bring some assets to the table that they couldn't fully put to use in their situation that Castle Rock will be able to put to use for a broader benefit. And so it, it made for a real nice partnership. And again, it's gonna give them that renewable water supply. As you know, we're looking at other potential ways to help unincorporated Douglas County over the long term with respect to renewable water supply. And one of those, of course, is uh, the regional wastewater proposal that you guys are considering now. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you about that one because right. I know we're rolling out of time, but yeah, please do uh, touch upon with everybody. Let them know what we're looking at down that 85 corridor. Absolutely. So. The regional wastewater proposal is really about both water and wastewater at the end of the day. 
We're working with uh, a wholesale provider, Dominion Water and Sanitation District. By the way, that's an entity that Castle Rock has partnered with over the last decade on a lot of regional infrastructure. And the way this will work is Dominion would actually be a wholesale provider for renewable water for some of the folks up that corridor that don't have access now. And the beauty of it is Castle Rock will then come in and help fund some of those connections and connectivity by buying the reusable water supply from that renewable water supply so that all of the water that we're bringing into Douglas County stays in Douglas County and gets reused to maximum benefit and in a most efficient manner. And of course, a bigger, you know, another important part of that is to provide wastewater service up that corridor, which will have benefits to the water quality in Chatfield Reservoir which is a drinking water source, not only for Castle Rock, but for Dominion and for Castle Pines North and, and some others, Castle Pines Metro District as well. So, and Highlands Ranch, quite frankly. Oh, that's outstanding. I mean, I know that's something we're trying to put together. Um, we've, uh, we've been trying to uh, take a look at that and we're looking still at uh, making that an investment point for the American Rescue Act funds that have come into the county. Um, and uh, yeah, trying to make it a win-win yeah. for everybody yeah. and getting this regional water, wastewater, really network that we really haven't had before set up and uh, set to serve the people of Douglas County. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, Doug, we're part of Douglas County, we're the county seat, and we have an interest in Douglas County being successful both in the incorporated and unincorporated areas. I'm really glad you said that. That makes my job easier. <laughs> That's great. Mark, we're coming to the end of our time. Yeah. Uh, I just want to open the floor to you. What else would you like the people that are following and uh, watching uh, to right now, what else would you like them to know about what we're doing here in Castle Rock um, uh, on the topic of water? The bottom line is I would like them to know we have a, a council that's committed to making sure that we've got a sustainable long-term renewable water supply here and that we also are committed, as I said, to, to helping Douglas County in that over the long term. I do want to mention we've got a, a number of other water providers in Douglas County that are also working very hard to ensure that we've got long-term renewable water supply in mm -hmm. Castle Rock and in Douglas County. And one of the really cool things about water providers in this area is that we are partnering on regional infrastructure every day. We have agreements with Parker Water, Dominion, uh, the Pinery, um, Castle Pines, um, a whole bunch of folks. So the, the bottom line is you got a lot of water providers working together to solve this issue for the long term. Well, thanks a lot, Mark. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us today. Again, I'm Douglas County Commissioner George Teal. I'm with Mark Marlowe, Town of Castle Rock. Thanks for joining. I hope you learned some things. I know I did. Look forward to seeing you next time.